We're going to look at how to enable and take advantage of HDR and EDR support within Affinity Photo. So just be aware before continuing that for Windows you need a compatible high dynamic range display and for Mac OS you need a compatible extended dynamic range display. And for both Windows and Mac, make sure you've installed the latest operating system updates as well. First, let's look at a brief overview of what high dynamic range entails within the context of image editing. You might be aware of high dynamic range displays. The principle of these displays is that they can achieve much higher levels of peak brightness compared to ordinary standard dynamic range displays. With a regular display, you have what's known as your diffuse white or paper white level, and this is usually calibrated according to the lighting around your display. For example, a diffuse white brightness of 100 or 120 nits is typical for an average lit indoor room. If the environmental lighting is brighter, the display might be calibrated to 200 or even 300 nits in order to match the perceptual brightness of the environment you are working in. This diffuse white is the maximum brightness that any content can be displayed at, however. By the way, the measurement, candela per square meter, often abbreviated to CD slash M squared, is equivalent to nits, so the terms are regarded as interchangeable. With high dynamic range displays, you still have your paper white or diffuse white level, but content is permitted to display much brighter. For example, a top of the range HDR monitor might be able to hit a peak brightness of 1000 or 1500 nits. For content that can take advantage of this, the result is a much more lifelike, realistic representation of tonal range. Usually, to deal with the large dynamic range of a scene, we would tone map it or use other editing techniques to make sure it can be displayed within the limited dynamic range of typical displays. This does however make the scene lose its drama and impact, since you are essentially compressing the brightest parts and reducing the overall dynamic range. Also, because we're using various techniques like tone compression and local contrast to remap those brighter values, we are also compromising the original representation of the scene. For example, the foreground in this scene would not look so bright, flat and compressed in reality. There should be more subtlety and nuance to the tones here. This is where Affinity's HDR and EDR support comes in. HDR, or High Dynamic Range, is Windows terminology, whereas EDR, or Extended Dynamic Range, is Mac terminology. The options between platforms will differ slightly, but the principle is the same. You'll be able to take advantage of a compatible display's higher peak brightness capability. There are three separate workflows for taking advantage of HDR and EDR. Two are for photographic material and the third is mainly for 3D render imagery, although it can be used within a photographic context. The first approach is by HDR merging several bracketed exposures together. When we HDR merge several exposures, Affinity Photo produces an unbounded 32-bit document. Unbounded means that you can have values less than 0 and greater than 1. It's the values greater than 1 that we're interested in, because these can be tone mapped accordingly to an HDR display's peak brightness. We can uncheck Tone Map HDR Image on the HDR Merge dialog, and this will prevent Affinity Photo from entering tone mapping once the HDR merge is complete. Now, ordinarily, we would need to tone map this scene in order to see its extended dynamic range. But instead, we can enable HDR on the 32-bit preview panel. If the panel is not showing by default, you can access it from View and Studio. You're watching this within a standard dynamic range video, so the effect is going to be far less dramatic, but you'll be able to see that enabling HDR reveals more detail in the brightest parts of the image. You can also perform additional edits to the image. For example, you might use an exposure adjustment to adjust your base exposure until the darker areas look correctly exposed for the scene. Then you might add a brightness and contrast adjustment to make the tones look a bit punchier as well. The second approach is with a single exposure, and it has to be a raw image. JPEGs have already been tone mapped and converted to 8-bit integer precision, so they have lost all additional dynamic range. What we need to do is set Affinity Photo's Develop Persona output to 32-bit float, and this must be done before the raw image in question is loaded. 
Without a document open, we can access the Assistant dialog, then click through to the Develop Assistant. Here we can change our raw output format from 16-bit to 32-bit HDR and ensure we leave the Tone Curve option set to Take No Action. With these options set, we can now load up the raw image. First, we can adjust the overall exposure and make the foreground brighter. Notice that this severely clips the highlights in standard dynamic range. We can actually access the 32-bit preview panel within the Develop Persona. And again, once we enable it, we can see more detail in the highlight areas. Upon developing the image and moving to the Photo Persona, the HDR option stays enabled. Here's a quick before and after with HDR disabled, then re-enabled. The third approach is to open an existing 32-bit float document, as is usually the case with 3D renders in OpenEXR or Radiance HDR formats. With this 3D render, we can see that enabling HDR reveals a lot of unbounded brightness values, which can now be displayed. You can also open up saved Affinity Photo documents in 32-bit from previous HDR merges and enable HDR with them too. Let's look quickly at the additional HDR preview options. These are similar under macOS, but the Windows options are slightly more involved. Clip Warning allows you to display clipping warnings based on your display's metadata. SDR will show clipping for everything above a standard dynamic range signal. Max will show clipping for the theoretical sustained max brightness, and Max Peak will show clipping for the theoretical peak brightness, which is not explicitly sustained. For example, with panels that have local dimming, a particular zone or area of the panel might be able to hit this peak brightness. Monitor Reference White will interact with the clipping warning and should be set to the diffuse white level that your display is calibrated to. For example, if you have measured and profiled your display to 120 nits, you should enter 120 here. This will ensure that the max and max peak clipping warnings are accurate. Clip to max will clip any values greater than the peak brightness value reported by the display. Usually the display will tone map any values exceeding its peak brightness range, but enabling this will clip those values before they even reach the display. This can be useful for previewing the HDR representation of an image without the display tone mapping any values it cannot reproduce. Finally, you can use the exposure slider in conjunction with the clipping warnings to get a good idea of how much headroom you would still need, even with an HDR display, to see the brightest values in the document. Notice as the exposure slider moves down that the clipping warning gradually decreases until brightness values are no longer being clipped. So there we go, that was a detailed look at the HDR and EDR support within Affinity Photo. Looking at this functionality from a photographic context, you can make use of high dynamic range viewing, either from a single exposure or from merging bracketed exposures together. Merging bracketed exposures will give you cleaner results with more dynamic range, but you can also underexpose a single raw image to make sure you capture enough highlight detail, then boost the exposure whilst developing it and enable HDR or EDR to be able to see that important highlight detail. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.